Hi, it's Kevin Hill with LSDPAs.com, and today we are going to talk about instant file initialization within SQL Server. Um, all my contact information is on the screen, as always. Pause that if you want to, to copy it all down and get in touch with me. That's how you do it, and we're going to move on. What is IFI, or instant file initialization, and why do you care? That's what it stands for. It's a big chunk of words, it's a real pain in the rear to say, so we just all call it IFI. It's a Windows feature. This is not something that is SQL Server specific. That's important to remember because when you go looking to turn it on, you're not going to find it in Management Studio. Uh, it's actually been available since, I want to say Windows 2003. SQL 2005 was, the, I believe, the first version that actually made use of this Windows function. It's very relevant because it's a file initialization process it's very relevant for when you're creating a database, altering to grow a file, restoring a database, and that's important. If your restores are taking forever down from, say, prod to dev on a big database, this might be part of the reason. And auto grow. Anything that changes or increases, let me just rephrase that, anything that increases or creates a data file, this, is, this can touch. Log files are completely out of the picture on this. They don't, it's not the same thing at all. You'll probably need sysadmin permissions to, to enable this if you don't do it, do it during the SQL Server installation. And there is a possible security risk. Microsoft warns about this and I warn about it. Because what's happening here is when you create the file without this permission, all of the space allocated to that file is filled up with zeros to overwrite any data that was on those portions of the hard drive that your new data file is on or your expanded data file. With, when you enable this, you're telling SQL Server to grab the space and not overwrite any data that was there. So if you had some social security numbers there, they might be visible to somebody that got past your firewall, found a password that worked, and hacked all the way in down to see the lower levels over or ready to be overwritten stuff on your disk. It's rare. It's a very hard thing to do. But if you're in a super secure environment with a very strict InfoSec policy, you need to check with that team to see if you can enable this. If you're installing, and I honestly don't remember where this came in or what version this came in, if you're installing SQL Server, check that box and that's all you have to do. Everything else will be handled behind the scenes. Many people see that little checkbox there, or actually they don't see it, and they don't realize what it is, so they skip it and they just move on. All right, enough of the PowerPoint. Let's move straight into the demo because that's where the fun stuff is anyway. Uh, this is a real, well, it's a real weak machine. It's a Azure VM. Ignore the IP address. They change all the time, so you can't get to my box even if you wanted to. Uh, I've got no databases here. Uh, it's a 2 CPU, 4 gig or 8 gig, something like that. Got no databases in it. Nothing up my sleeves. Uh, if you don't know what this command is, I'm just going to have it give me some time you know, stamps on how long SQL Server takes to do things. Go, You can go look that up later on. You can also use I.O. with or instead of time to see, you know, how much, how many pages were read and stuff like that. It's really cool and I use it every day. If I run this, it gives me the time elapsed to create this IFI test database. 1793, that's, you know, 1.8 seconds. That's not bad. It did have to create the log file and the data file with the, I believe, 8 megs each by the default here. Yeah, standard installation default, 8 megs a piece. So it had to write that out, plus do all the stuff that it does, you know, records in the master database, etc., etc. All right, so we did that. And now let's scroll down. I don't want an 8 meg file, because that's just ridiculous. You know, can't put anything in there. So I'm going to do alter database. I'm going to alter my IFI test. I'm going to modify the logical file IFI test, which if we go back over here, we can see is my data file. You know, underscore log is the default for log. This is the only one that applies. Remember, this one doesn't do anything to log file, what we're talking about. So, and I'm going to grow it to one gig. All right. So we'll just run that. And wait just a second. Well, not wait a second. Wait probably 43 seconds if my tests are accurate. Now I'm going to, through the magic of, of video editing, I'm not going to make you wait that long. Okay, and we're back. And we can see that this took, yep, 43, 
I'm going to copy and paste this up here just so we'll have it in case we want to refer back to it. Spoiler alert, I'm going to refer back to it. Took 43 seconds to grow this file to 1 gigs. All right, that's awesome. Now, just to prove that wasn't a fluke, I'm going to add 2 gigs to it. Same file. It's at 1 gig now. I'm taking it up to 3, so you do the math and fire that off and once again through the magic of video editing we have a total of 87 seconds there's no guarantee that these numbers when you do them are gonna bear any resemblance to what I'm getting but you know it's fairly consistent this is a like I said this is a fairly weak box it's just your super basic Azure VM copy that alright now you can imagine that if you wanted to add 10 50, 200 gigs, this is going to be an expensive operation. It's going to take a long time. And if you're familiar at all with auto grow, which I mentioned in the slides, this is impacted. If you have an auto grow setting, that only kicks in when people are actively using the system and adding data to your database. That's the worst possible time to have something like a file alteration happen. Auto grow is a fail safe. It's just there in case some, a bunch of stuff comes in when you're not looking as a DBA manage your file growths automatically pre-expand in off hours but still you don't want to get caught if you do happen to have a whole boatload of data come in you want that growth to be instant thus the term instant file initialization so what we need to do is we need to go into the windows local security policy oh let me show you real quick before we get there this is my youtube instance and it's rendering running on a user named joe test and just because I want to show you this, Joe is in here, and he is a member of nothing but users. It's important. Also want to show you in the groups, the administrators, it's just got me. No Joe. Joe's gone. What we have to do is go into the local security policy. Local policies, user rights assignment, simply. And you'll see this right here. This is the same thing as that checkbox I was showing you from the installation screen on the second slide, third slide. The administrators group has this right. We need Joe to have it because Joe is running the SQL Server service and he is the one that is going is responsible for file manipulations. So we go in here, we put good old Joe in there, check his name, there he is, hit OK. And now he's got that. He's in the list, but you're not done yet. You need to go and you need to restart SQL Server for this to happen. Because this process is something that is checked at startup time and it's actually in the SQL Server error logs whether this setting is enabled or disabled. Now it shows up in different ways. The farther along you get to the newer versions of SQL Server, the more detailed the message. But okay, that's done. We're going to go look at the SQL Server error log like I just said. It says 928 on this one, so let's have a refresh. This is the 928, and when I scroll to the bottom, or the start of the error log, and then I scroll back up, I'm looking for this right here. Database instant file blah 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 enabled. You know, and you can see it a little cleaner down here if you don't like all the jumbled up error log, but this is enabled. So, Joe, the SQL Server service account runner, has the right to do this, which is really good because now we're going to take this thing from, what are we at, 3 gigs? awesome we're gonna take this thing up to 20 gigs now when we added from 1 to 3 we added 2 gigs and it took 87 seconds roughly a minute and a half you can imagine what adding an additional 17 gigs would do you can do the math on that we have IFI turned on and if the demo gods are with me it's gonna go really fast 1.3 seconds that's not bad I'll take that and we have a 20 gig data file. It really is that simple to get this right when you install your SQL Server. Unless you're in a highly secure environment, check that box every single time. You can always uncheck it if somebody gets upset about it and says well, that's against the rules. This will save you time when you're doing restores because something crashed and your terabyte database has to be restored in prod. Auto grows, expansion of files, this will save your system from bogging down behind a file growth. 
just enable it unless you very specifically have been told not to. Uh, that's all I've got for you today. Have a great day.